they're stopping Whiting now. You kind of don't see it as a job. You kind of, you kind of getting paid to do a hobby. I know mean, it's brilliant, but you know it's obviously it's got a short career span. It's a try for Breers. Any sports a business, and the players were just a piece of meat. You know, we, we can be throughout to one side if any time a contract's up. And then suddenly you're thinking about what do I do after? What? How am I going to pay for my mortgage? How am I going to support my family and my children when all I know is rugby league? And it's a scary thought. The injury that, that finished me was my head's been like twisted and I was just freaking out. I was like screaming, I can't feel my body. A year ago, you know, I was playing in, in Challenge Cup finals and winning trophies. It's a Wembley occasion that belongs to the town of Wigan. I found myself 26. You know, I'm going to be in, in my in prime. Um, finished. I didn't want to think that injury could could ever stop me from playing. Yeah, you, you, you need to, to sort your, your life out, outside of the rugby. Players should start thinking about what they're going to do almost as soon as they put pen to paper as a professional. It's as important as that. That transition when you finish. The end, you know, what, what the next thing for me is. Seeing people who've been in a lot of money and who are terrific lads who have great family lives suddenly faced with without an income. It's something I've worried about all my career, if I'm honest. Like I've really worried about it. It's certainly been a motivating factor to, to make sure I'm sorted for when I finish. The key for yourself is not to sit on sit on your bum and wait for things to happen, is to get out there and meet people and take up opportunities that, that your current profession presents you. I've worked hard alongside my training and my career to, to try and um, improve myself and educationally and, and make sure that I've got something to fall back on when I, when I do hang up the boots. Now I find myself with, you know, an uphill, an uphill climb as far as education goes and the next three or four years is going to be really tough for me. I've always wanted to stay in sport. A lot of people have got degrees now and I realised that I probably wanted to be in admin sport administration and, um, you know, down the track, you know, 10 or 15 years down the track, possibly a chief exec somewhere at a sports club and having a, a sport business degree in particular would, would help me along the way. Even if you don't want, a young player doesn't want to stay in education, wants to be, you know, a manual labour, just, even if it's on your day off, you know, keep going, dipping your toe in with whatever you're doing. It was hard work. Like you imagine doing your, your pre-season training or the day after the game when you've been absolutely battered all around the pitch. Yet you've got your tool bag in the back of the van and you know that you've got a property that needs finishing. I had to go and do that. Rugby doesn't last forever. You've got to have something else and making those sacrifices to make sure that I did have my education or an alternative career path if, for instance, rugby didn't work out. I'm quite lucky to be to be still involved in, in the sport through Sky TV, but that was from, from hard work. That was from doing stuff and putting my hand up saying, yeah, I'll do that. When Sky used to come down to training, I'd say, yeah, I'll do that interview. I'll put myself out because you never know what happens. I've always been of the mentality, say yes to things. Sometimes these things lead somewhere, and something that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud of myself for sticking to that sort of motto. The majority of players don't realise what a valuable asset they are away from the sport. Subconsciously, they pick up a lot of teamwork and leadership skills that that can therefore help them in further life. Everyone's looking for that person who can come into their business and enhance their business and make it grow. And rugby league players have got that in abundance. If you can add the, the industrial skills or the business skills to them, they become very successful people along the track. The main advice I'd give is to never stop enjoying the game because you're going to go through you're going to go through high points and you're going to go through low points. But as long as you keep enjoying the game and you keep the love for the sport, I think it's important to to have fun and enjoy yourself as a, as, a, as a young man. But I, I think there's definitely a balance there between focusing on the future and having some small goals in place about what it is you would like to do. Clubs in the RFL are actually doing more now than ever to put things in place where people can get an education, you can go out there, there's grants available, especially for the young lads coming through. You've got to make the most of these opportunities. You know, it doesn't last forever. Players said it to me when I was playing and, oh yeah, it'll be all right, you know, I've got plenty of years left. Um, but it, it comes around quite quick um, and sort of having that plan B is definitely something that I'm, I'm grateful of having.